You know, sometimes, Dan, you're out there criticizing the media, and I want to defend the media, but there is no defense here. This was an atrocious uh, series of mistakes by many different major newsrooms all around the same time on Tuesday. And unfortunately, I don't think there's been enough follow-up or accountability to make sure it doesn't happen again. Hello, and welcome back, all you amazing people who keep coming back to watch my take on what I call the Democrat Party state media. If you watched last night's stream on Rumble or YouTube, then you heard me complaining, as I often do, about the total lack of accountability for all the self-titled police of disinformation. Based on the latest polling, most of us see them for who they actually are prolific spreaders of disinformation. Unless you've been in a coma or cave, then I'm sure you've heard by now that Hamas struck one of their own hospitals with a failed rocket attack, then tried to play it off as an Israeli airstrike that destroyed a hospital and killed 500 people. Which doesn't make any sense and should raise some immediate questions. Because if Israel's going to bomb a hospital, why wouldn't they bomb one that sits on top of Hamas headquarters? If you're gonna take all this heat, you might as well take out a valuable target. It doesn't make any sense, but of course our media ran with it. The horrific scene at a hospital in Gaza today, an explosion that killed more than 500 people. The government in Gaza says the Israeli Defense Forces uh, struck a hospital in the center of Gaza City. An airstrike hit a Gaza City hospital, killing at least 500 people. You're talking about 500 people. You have to wonder how many of those people are innocent civilians. That minimum, hundreds of people have been killed in what they say was an Israeli airstrike. Where a hospital was caved in, killing hundreds and stranding an untold number under the concrete. By far, the deadliest Israeli airstrike ever. As usual, the self-appointed high priest of really true information turn out to be the biggest spreaders of disinformation. And this time, they didn't just incite years worth of riots across America with their lies, but inflamed a worldwide jihad that could spiral into another World War III scenario, which might make it a good time to start stocking up on that emergency food supply. My Patriot Supply, the largest preparedness company in the country, is dropping the price of their top selling three month emergency food kit. Get a delicious variety of breakfast, lunches, dinners, and more for $200 off. Secure your supply of this three month emergency food kit from My Patriot Supply. Visit preparewithdronetech.com to save $200 on your food security. You know, sometimes, Dan, you're out there criticizing the media, and I want to defend the media, but there is no defense here. This was an atrocious uh, series of mistakes by many different major newsrooms all around the same time on Tuesday. And unfortunately, I don't think there's been enough follow-up or accountability to make sure it doesn't happen again. It's pretty wild when Brian Stelter, of all people, is calling you out for spreading disinformation. But I think he's wrong to call it a mistake. I've been following this war and the media's reaction to it for the last 20 years, and the media always does this. Hell, they always take the side of Muslim terrorists in general. Remember when they were calling an ISIS leader, al-Baghdadi, an austere religious scholar? This is nothing new. All that's really changed is the people's ability to call out and shame the media. However, what Brian was right about is the total lack of accountability. These are the very same news organizations that spent four years saturating the country in disinformation in an attempt to undo the 2016 election results. And now they're just going to get away with possibly starting a worldwide jihad with their BS? However, there is one small, tiny morsel of accountability that I want to tell you about, as reported by the Washington Post if we can trust them. Per the Washington Post's Drew Harwell, Elon Musk's ex removes the New York Times verification badge. <laughs> the unexplained decision removes the only symbol distinguishing the news organization from imposters and comes amid a flood of false information related to the Israel-Gaza war. <laughs> what they fail to tell you is that that flood of disinformation it's coming from the New York Times. And of course, at no point during this entire article by Drew Harwell does he ever mention all the false information spread by the New York Times. So yeah, this is just an issue that's near and dear to my heart because I am just so sick of listening to these people preach like high priests about disinformation when they are the biggest, most prolific spreaders of it. And just the fact that the Washington Post article itself is misleading by saying that Elon Musk inexplicably removed the gold verification badge when it's not inexplicable at all. The New York Times has been pushing disinformation. All right, folks, that's all I have for that. Thanks for watching. Have a great weekend and keep checking back.